On the second day of the Auckland Racing Club's Easter meeting at Ellerslie, the totalisated take was over 260,000 pounds, a New Zealand record. And a large slice of this was on the Great Northern Steeples. This race is one of the toughest in New Zealand. And there is our nation leading the field up the hill for the first time round. Down in front of the stands, the field is approaching the sod wall. The favourite, Master Marut, fell at the first fence on the hill, and Brookby Song has moved into second place. Down to the water jump, and over. And it's all over for this gentleman already. Coming into the home straight the last time round, and our nation has led all the way, and she's well in front of Brookby Song. Dear, I think that's one of ours. It's a popular victory, and our nation, 4-4 in the betting, collects for her owner a prize of £2,200. At Iwakuni Airfield, the hangar ropes have been taken for rebuilding bombed Japanese cities. And now, for New Zealand's 14th Fighter Squadron, servicing aircraft is a rather drafty business. On these Corsair fighters, there is daily servicing to be done. And as an innovation, the squadron pilots are being given lectures on engine maintenance by men of the ground staff. An airman stands by with a fire extinguisher as a Corsair is started up. Fourteen squadron work as a team. And squadron leader De Wiramoff, his pilots and his ground staff are keeping them flying over Japan. A few miles from Iwakuni at Otaki, the New Zealand Div Cavalry are supervising the return of Japanese troops to their homeland. From as far abroad as Indochina, Singapore and Rabaul, the soldiers are returning. No victory celebrations here. A New Zealand soldier counts them as they land. And they move into line for the station. For them, the first stage in a new, peaceful and more profitable life. First process in number plate making is feeding sheet steel into a guillotine. Drawn from government stocks, this sheet steel was originally intended for wartime purposes. Now it's being put to peacetime uses. And this press puts the number into number plate. It stamps out the plates in pairs, one for the front and one for the back of every vehicle. After it has rung up one pair, the die automatically turns over to the next number. To supply all New Zealand, this machine has to turn out 327,000 pairs. A dip into a bath of enamel gives the plates their distinguishing colour for the year. This year it's buff. Making number plates is a job in which this firm specialises, and one for which they've designed their own machinery. The enamel plates are dried in a horseshoe-shaped oven. As wet plates are put in one side, dry plates come out the other. Finally, the numbers get their coat of black. At all stages of manufacture, careful check is kept to see that all plates are perfect and that all the numbers are there. They come out from under the rollers evenly blacked. Their clearness is something that brings joy to the heart of every traffic cop. And with one on either end of his car, the motorist is well and truly taped. Without the University of Otago, the city of Dunedin would be much the poorer. Year after year, hundreds of young New Zealanders come to live in this city, a material asset that flows in from north and south, for the students always lead to the university. Founded in the days when co-education was looked down upon in some countries, the University of Otago has moved apace with knowledge. In New Zealand today, the demand for university education has never been greater. With many students not long out of the services, classes are too full, staffs too few, and lecture rooms too small. 
In the home science school, hundreds of girls learn something more than a profession. Wisdom gathered here spreads into our nation's homes. From the dental school come our future dentists, and we need more and more as our population grows. With a worldwide reputation for its work, the dental school is, for all that, in need of more and better equipment. But the medical school is the biggest problem in this overcrowded university. This is a national problem. We need more doctors. To meet the demand of growing health services, the medical school must have more buildings, more staff. Through theory, research and hospital work, it's a long course. Years of hard work for those who stay the distance. Government and university authorities are today working to solve difficulties which rapid expansion has brought. Already a new medical wing is under construction. It's badly needed, and so is living accommodation for students. Knox College, residential college for men, Selwyn College also for men, and St. Margaret's for women are crowded out. Digs are the solution for most students. These boys share the joys of boarding together, at least up to a point. These girls share the rent of a furnished house. Of course, it has been called the chookery. But however they live, graduation is the goal they aim at, the reward for work well done. As capping day approaches, important preparations are made. In His Majesty's Theatre, a rehearsal for the students' capping concert gets underway in traditional style. Preparing flutes for the procession is a labor of fun. The students are getting ready to go to town, and with some purpose. They are entertain the city, and at the same time collect money for crippled children. The girls do their share by selling badges. Capping day is here again. It's a happy return of the capping procession after five years' absence. It circles the hospital on its way to the city. are hard at work, and the money grows as a mystery train pops into the octagon. The battle cry of the student invasion is just a penny. The university is a cultural powerhouse of this community. Today, it's letting off steam. In Dunedin, the university and the community are closely linked. This is Dunedin's day as well as capping day. Workers take time out, trams stop in their tracks, everyone gathers in town, and a thousand pounds drops into the collection boxes. This capping day means more men and women have been fully trained to take their place in the community. Through the University of Otago, Dunedin and New Zealand are the richer. <laughs> 